All right, we're now moving to DCI 1616. Uh, sorry, apologies, we have to move to the substantive motion. So that is now part of the substantive item. Uh, I'd like now to put that to the vote, given that we've had some debate. Uh, would the mover and seconder like, would the mover like to close the debate? No? Oh. Yep. Um, oh, point of order. Also, there's been debate. Uh, for, would you like to speak to the item? No, unable okay. to uh, close the debate. Right of reply because there has been an amendment to the initial mm. Right. So oh, yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Thank you. You're uh, exacting your responsibilities very well, Councillor Thompson. Uh, you're right about that. Is there any right. further debate on this item? Okay, in that case, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Okay. Maybe we should give them housing advice. Okay, uh, Councillor Tapanos, we've uh, finished that item. We're moving to City Infrastructure, DCR 1616, endorsement of the Northern, Northern Regional Trail Strategy. Uh, do I have a mover for this? Uh, Councillor Thompson? An alternative alternative recommendation. recommendation? Yep. Sorry, this was sent through as well, Councillors. And. So, from page. Um, 155 in on the agenda. I'd like to move that council acknowledge that the endorsing endorsing this strategy, the Edgars Creek Trail, trail is noted as an off-road trail, and that the Edgars Creek um, Conservation and Development Plan uh, supports an on-road to preserve the natural environment of this area. And the council will give opportunity to the recommendations of the Edgars Creek Conservation and Development Plan when considering the Edgars Creek Trail in the future. And three, that council recommends to the Northern Region CEOs that the name of the strategy be reviewed to encompass the wider benefits of the strategy. And the council will suggest that the strategy be renamed the Connecting the Northern Regions for Tourism, Recreation and Sustainable Transport. I have a second also. Yes, is there a second? Councillor Hopper, did you wish to second that? Uh, initially, I thought I saw your hand up. No, no. Um, oh, I think I was waving at Mr. Okay. Dolby, but I'm quite. Is happy. there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Kavanagh, <laughs> Councillor Kavanagh, is seconding that alternative uh, motion. Councillor Thompson, do you wish to speak to it? Yes, thank you. Just quickly, that this is um, the Northern Region Trails Strategy, which is hopefully going to be renamed. Um, <coughs> comes out of the Northern Horizons 50-year infrastructure strategy that we've been working with with seven other councils, and this particular strategy looks at um, bicycle routes or bicycle trails in the northern part of the municipal. And um, there are three new priority trails that this document highlights in Moreland. And I'd just like to um, acknowledge that um, one of them is along the Upfield Rail Trail, and it is connecting um, the, the, the missing link, it's been named, between um, Fox Forest Road and the, um, and the Western Ring Road. So that has been um, advocated as a priority bike uh, bike trail and also along the upfield rail again in the Coburg se section and into Brunswick. Um, so that has been uh, endorsed in this particular plan as well. And also that Edgars Creek one in the plan, it says that they want to build a, um, a bike trail as a priority, but um, council has endorsed a, a con conservation and development plan contrary to that. So. In, I'm just letting you know that endorsing this particular strategy doesn't mean that we will be endorsing that trail mm -hmm. along Edgars Creek. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor Kavanagh, do you wish to add no, anything further? Okay. Is there, are there any questions or further debate on this item? Oh, um, Councillor Hopper? Yeah, just to note um, that a member of gallery has asked me to point out um, that sections of the Craigie Burn Trail are already being built um, and that yep. they do comprise part of the strategy that is already underway. Yep. Great, thank you. That's noting, thank you. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against, I declare that carried. We're moving on to DCI 1716 Memorial Garden for Victims of Violence. Councillor Kavanagh is moving. I'd like to move um, just a slightly different recommendation yep, to one certainly. before us. Point one and two, which are as is, but to add a point three, that at the appropriate time, Mr Phil Cleary be invited to open the Memorial Garden for Victims of Violence. Mm, okay, thank you. Is there a seconder to the amended motion, Councillor Davidson? Councillor Kavanagh, do you wish to speak to it? No, just to, first of all, just thank officers for their promptness on this report. Uh, appreciate it very much. I think it'd be appropriate recognition. I'm happy with all three possible choices. Um, Brosnan Park, I think, is an interesting one because, um, of course, Father Brosnan was the uh, 
priest at the time of, um, in company with uh, Ronald Ryan at his death. And when you think about it, I suppose that's the ultimate violence of a, a state uh, killing its, its citizen. Um, is also ha happens to be my grandmother's first cousin, and my grandmother was the leading advocate in Australia for the last woman hanged in Australia, mm. Jean Lee at Pentridge also. Mm. So um, just happens to be uh, my mum's first, my grandmother's first cousin as well. So I mean, no, I know officers wouldn't be aware of that, but that's um, the Father Brosnan is probably an appropriate one in that respect, having been in the company of Ronald Wright. But either of the, any of those three choices, I think, are excellent choices for such a gun. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Councillor Davidson, do you wish to speak to it? Um, just to say that uh, this is a very pertinent motion, particularly given the current um, events that have happened in the media just recently. Um, also, uh, I think that having that public presence of a memorial will encourage people to reflect and to think quite consciously of family violence and how it affects everybody. Thank you, Councillor Davidson. Councillor Yildiz. You can I just say this is a great gesture that we've done, and um, even though I keep regular contact with Jill Maher's father and mother in Perth um, and brother Michael. Um, this is what her father didn't want. Um, but in saying that, I think if I called George up tomorrow and told him that this is now a reality, I think he'd be certainly uh, quite impressed that um, you know, her, her name has indicted in vain. I'm sure she'll get a mention. But uh, definitely my preference for what it's worth, definitely Brosnan Park because of the fact that it, Brosnan Park, sorry, because of the location in terms of the cemetery proximity, um, I think it's easily accessible too. So, um, yeah, this is a fantastic gesture. And I, I have to say, in my, you know, eight years being here, this is something that um, has a bit of sentimental value to me. I, I don't know if you know, but um, you probably don't, but some of you don't, but George McKean's now suffered his fourth stroke. Um, and every time I go to Perth, I go and visit them. And they're a fantastic family. He can't travel on the, on aeroplane and don't know if he'll ever see this. But um, once this is up, I'd be taking some photos and sending it to him. But, um, yeah, I think it's fitting that we, um, we're we finally getting this done. So, well done. Congratulations to all those involved in this. Well done. Thank you, Councillor Yildiz. Any further comment on this? <coughs> Councillor Thompson. Um, again, I rise uh, to speak against uh, this particular motion. Um, for the exact reasons that uh, were pointed out by Councillor Davidson, I suppose this week has been has brought it back to you that uh, that uh, the level of violence is, is ridiculous just down the road here at, at, uh, at Northlands in Preston, um, and the allegations will, will be admitted um, there between the mother and, and daughter, um, and these sort of things are just constantly happening. Uh, Interestingly, the very next motion, which is our, our, our more than early years, years strategy, um, the, the defining component of that is improve health, wellbeing and education outcomes for children um, uh, and, to, and to make uh, more than a child friendly. And, and the, the reasons I bring those up is that we should be spending more money on direct action and not um, gardens and, and places to go and, and think about these things. I think we should be spending it on, on results and result driven. Um, and when we do our white ribbon and we do do those components, we, we often get people coming and telling us what we can do to fix these the, these things or how we can go about um, you know, getting results that are going to be better for us. Uh, and some of those are, are simple tasks. And one of those has been, as I've banged on about over, over the course of the last few weeks, uh, is making sure that we've got play groups and we're engaging with those, those vulnerable families and particularly the vulnerable mums and dads and their kids and getting them out of the house and, and that circuit breaker. And I would love to see the 40 odd thousand dollars that we're prepared to spend here going into something a little bit more tangible. Whilst, of course, this is a lovely gesture, I think it is just a gesture and I'd rather spend that money on tangible results and really look like we're doing something each and every year. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hopper. Thank you. Um, look, I rise to note Councillor Thompson's concern, um, but to reflect on the fact that these things are not necessarily mutually exclusive um, and don't need to come at the expense of one another. Um, and I think that uh, certainly if Councillor Thompson decides to raise as part of the budget bid a suggestion that we fund a playgroups coordinator um, to do the important work that you've just described and have been advocating for during our budget discussions, then I would be very supportive 
supportive of that bid, um, but that doesn't mean that by supporting that, I automatically have to say no to projects such as this, which commemorate the victims of violence. Um, and I think that you know we see over the last few weeks, in particular with the release of the Royal Commission into Family Violence, the fact that there are 227 recommendations in that report, and not a single one of those recommendations comes at the expense of any of the other 226 recommendations. They need to be considered as a package and as a whole. Um, and today, the Victorian State Government has announced $61.6 .6 million to implement some of those things. And in the next budget after that, they will have to spend more to continue to implement the rest of those recommendations. And like that, this is an ongoing commitment to recognise that violence exists in our community um, and to say that we don't accept it as a council and that there are many ways that we can promote our lack of acceptance of violence. One of those is by implementing changes um, in our playgroups and by employing staff um, to promote positive change in the community. That's a very pragmatic way of delivering these changes. But some of those changes too are community driven um, programs that recognise what's gone before us. And I think that each is equally important. Thank you, Councillor Hogborough. Um, if I could make a quick comment before we close the debate. Um, just want to congratulate Councillor Kavanagh for bringing this motion to uh, Council's attention. And I know we share, uh, many of us share a uh, commitment to this, um, but I think uh, it's a result of the initi initiative you took a few meetings ago. Uh, and I echo all the sentiments that have been raised in support of this motion. Uh, do Councillor Kavanagh or Davidson wish to close the debate? No. Okay, all right. I might put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried unanimously. Vote against it. <laughs> I declare that carried unanimously. Can you it, please? We'll move on to DSD 616 Moreland Early Year Strategies. Uh, Councillor Rob Thompson wishes to move the report. Yes. The recommendations. Is there a seconder? I, I wouldn't mind seconding it. That's okay, Councillor. Yep. My uh, I rise as uh, Councillor responsible for, responsible for children. Um, I just uh, would like to point out uh, that uh, this identifies the priorities of, uh, of supporting more than, ch more than children and families over the coming years. Uh, the three points that I'd just like to raise are improved health and wellbeing and education outcomes for children in Moreland, especially for those children who are vulnerable, which I have just reiterated in the previous uh, motion, uh, an integrated and responsive family and child focused service system in Moreland and uh, and to take action to make Moreland a child friendly city and community. Uh, I'd just like to say that the group that meets uh, in relation to our, our early years strategy and um, and the forums that are, that are had there are, are quite productive. Um, I'm disappointed that I have, haven't been able to make a few of them as they are during, during business hours but I thoroughly encourage anybody to get along and have a listen to them because it's a great way of bringing a lot of the services together here uh, at, under this one roof mm -hmm. and uh, and you hear from a, a lot of different people of, of what they're doing and, and how it's working and it's, uh, it's really encouraging to see them all coming together uh, every quarter and having that discussion. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Uh, if I could add to uh, what Councillor Thompson has mentioned about the strategies, this is a fantastic piece of work with some extensive consultation uh, across the services uh, in this municipality, uh, services that we have a lot of interaction with as council um, in our partnership approach. Uh, I'd like to note that the report starts that since 2001, there's been a 40% increase in births. So we are experiencing a younger population that we have to cater to. Uh, the aspects of facilitating partnerships and integration of the system are really key features and fantastic elements of this policy going forward. Uh, and as Councillor Hopper mentioned with the Royal Commission into Family Violence uh, findings, the integration of the system is one of the key findings in terms of people fall through gaps when these things aren't integrated. And I think as a council, um, we have varying levels of uh, Sort of responsibility in terms of direct service provision, but what we do have a core responsibility, I think, is in helping broker those partnerships and identify the gaps and try and help uh, match organisations to each other and to partner with each other to integrate and meet and uh, respond to those gaps. So that's really fantastic that we're going to be focusing on that. Uh, and particular actions that are really, um, really great and I think will make such a big difference. Uh, literacy promoting environments are featured in the policy playgroups and parenting programs, which uh, they're just not enough of, uh, and we can prevent so much of the uh, despair that we see and uh, things like family violence with good parenting education at an early age. Uh, it also has a goal to increase immunisation rates to 95%, which is uh, the, st the state goal, and we've got a little bit to go there. Uh, and also notes that we've got 
had a 94% increase in family violence in our municipality. Uh, so it tells you of the issues that we're trying to address through a strategy like this. Uh, it also is going to use an approach of consulting with children uh, in uh, developing some of these approaches. So I think that's uh, really forward thinking and uh, commend all the work that officers have put into this really, really fantastic document. Uh, are there any further speakers to this item? Councillor Thompson. Uh, yeah, just a quick one to also echo the sentiments put forward by Councillor Thompson and Ratnam about this strategy. Uh, it's certainly great to see it um, before us. And I guess becoming a mother during the term of this council, we I certainly have realised all the, the breadth of the services available that council um, offers and also parents um, who also do offer services and um, play groups and everything for new parents as well. Like it's a, it's one of those things that um, takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. So it certainly helps with, with that and um, new parents coming into the to the to the scene. I just wanted to highlight as well um, on page two eighty seven. Um, it's encouraging active um, play and physical exercise and healthy eating. It's noted that like um, 40 odd years ago, there were 80% of Australian st students riding to work or using active transport to go to work, um, to school, sorry. And now that's down to 20%. So, and I, <clears throat> I remember hearing stories from Councillor Kavanagh about uh, the school and the number of children who no longer walk, uh, walk or ride to school. So it's a, it's a sort of a, a telling a figure, a telling number of how many kids are not sort of using that active transport that, that we as a councillor are encouraging. On thank different levels of thank you very much, Councillor Thompson. Any further comment on that? In that case, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against, I declare that carried. Could I please have an extension motion to extend the time by Second. half an hour, please? Councillor Hopper and Councillor Bolton seconding it. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Uh, we're getting to the end of the night. We should be done within half an hour, councillors. Mm. Councillor Hopper. Um, procedural motion to remove the item earlier laid on the table. Yes. Or to all, pick it back up. All those in favour of lifting it off the table? All those against? I declare that carried. Councillor Hopper. Um, I'd like to move an alternative recommendation, which I've just circulated to councillors, and I'll read it out. Uh, one, the motion to be presented to ELGA be amended to read as follows. One, that ELGA notes with concern the impact that impending changes to the aged care service system, effective 1st of July 2016, will have on council aged service providers in Victoria. Two, that ELGA seeks a meeting with the Federal Minister for Aged Services, at which ELGA will promote the many successes of the Victorian local government sector in providing aged care, the stability of the Victorian local government aged care workforce, and advocate for local government to continue to be a preferred provider for community aged care. Three, that ELGA calls upon the Federal Government to better promote the impending changes to the aged care service system, including but not limited to changes to entry points for service delivery via My Aged Care, how services will be delivered in a marketised environment beyond 2019, and how this may alter the capacity of local government to deliver services beyond 2019. Four, that ELGA calls upon the Federal Government to make a public commitment to not disadvantage through the tender process those councils that choose to exercise their right as a democratically elected level of government to promote their objection to the impending aged care service system changes. And point two of my motion, that council delegates to councillors attending ELGA to make further amendments to the motion's key arguments as necessary. Thank you, Councillor oh, Hopper. Is there a second to Councillor Bolton? Uh, Councillor Hopper, do you wish to speak further to it? Sure. Look, I won't speak very much because it just took me so long to read out the motion in the first place. Um, but I do think that it's really important when we go to ELGA that we do raise loudly and clearly our concern um, with the changes to the aged services system. And I think it's one of the few opportunities that we will have um, to bring this up between now and the federal election um, and talk to the community about the impact this, that this is going to have on local government. I think that by being a strong voice on this matter at ELGA, it gives us the opportunity to promote to our community that we do have our finger on the pulse of what this means um, for the elderly in our community and for the aged care services workforce, many of whom do work in local government. Um, the work that they are doing is fantastic and there's absolutely nothing politically wrong in bringing that to the the attention of the Minister for Aged Services, and I would certainly hope that anybody at ELGA would be proud to go into a meeting with the Minister for Aged Services and tell him about the excellent work that is being done by local government providers in this sector in Victoria. Um, and at the last council meeting where we discussed Councillor Bolton's proposal um, to publicise our concerns with the aged care services changes, 
The concern was raised by some councillors that that would lead to us being disadvantaged in later stages of the tender process. Um, and I do think that as a level of democratically elected government, it's important that the federal government says, well, no, that's not going to happen. You do have the opportunity to speak up on behalf of your community and clearly articulate the concerns that you have with these proposals. And that is not going to impact on whether you are the best people to provide aged care services or not. Um, so I think that it's important that we say that loud and clearly um, at conference, and I hope that this is what we get to speak to as delegates on conference floor. Thank you. Councillor Bolton. Yes, um, thank you very much, Councillor Hopper, for coming up with an alternative motion. I feel much happier about voting for the motion because I feel it actually says something meaningful. Um, I think we do need to take something meaningful to um, the um, ALGA conference. and. Um, it sort of gets in, uh, the motion gets in um, some of our concerns, not all of the concerns. Mm. Um, I'd like it to even, a lot of ways, go um, be, be even stronger, but I'm quite satisfied with the motion. I think we should definitely um, take this to Algots. Um, I think it is the most obvious issue at the moment to take to um, ALGA um, because of these really massive changes that are going to come to. Um, the home and community care system, and especially as this is a group of people, either people who are really not in a position to campaign for their services themselves, or family members who um, work full time, have kids, and looking after elderly parents, are not in a position to really have extra time to advocate for, for their services. So um, I certainly hope we take this to Alga. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. There's been quite significant debate on this, so I'm going to put it to the vote if there are any burning hands going up. All right, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried unanimously as well. Thank you very much, Councillors, and thank you, Councillor Hopper and uh, Tapanos, for amending those words. I think they're much stronger. Uh, that's great. Uh, we're now moving to notices of motion. Uh, we're going to notice of motion 1916, I think Councillor Kavanagh's motion, West Street had field. Yeah, thanks. Um, I move the recommendation on page 314. And if I have a second, I'll briefly speak yep, to so it. Is there a seconder? Councillor Davidson. Uh, Councillor Kavanagh. Basically, the motion is simply asking that um, we start to move on what we resolved in December 2014. Um, um, I know there's other pressing things, but this seems to have just stalled, and this is to try and keep right. on. Councillor like. Davidson. No, nothing further to okay. Except uh, any other comments? Either CEO wanted yes. to make a comment quickly. Yes. So, and just yes. through the mayor, just my apologies. It's just more of a just a, a wording yeah. finesse. If it's possible to say refer into the 1718 Capital That's Work fine. Program. Yes. Fine. Um, and no issues with the completion. I think I understand there's some progress there. Yeah, I understand, um, but yeah, is okay, that, that's fine. I hope that's okay. Capital's work program. And did you want to retain completion in there or no? Refer to the, refer the project of 2017. It's in progress. It's, okay. it's in progress already okay. in the detailed design, Great. so that's okay. Yeah, so there's yeah. amended, word, amended words. Uh, further debate questions on this item? No? In that case, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Davidson, you have the next notice of motion, signage at Glenroy West Primary. Yep, which is exactly what the motion is for. It's for two signs for the York Street Kindergarten and also the Glenroy West Primary School. Um, both these, um, the kindergarten and the school, is very hard to find. It's sort of off Pascal. Councillor Davidson, I'll just look at oh, a seconder and then we'll speak to it. I'm, I'm happy to second. No, uh, Councillor Bolton seconding. is seconding. Yeah. Councillor Davidson. Thank you. It's, as I was saying, it's off Pascal Road and it's quite difficult to locate. So the schools has said they'll fund the signage themselves and we just need to work with them to find an appropriate location. Thank you. Councillor Bolton, wish you had anything further? Yeah, I would like to. I've been to that school on a number <laughs> of occasions and, um, you know, because the streets in that area um, are not on any kind of grid pattern, so it means that actually it is a bit harder to find than, you know, um, than it would be if the streets were on more of a grid pattern. So, uh, yeah, I think it would be really useful to act actually have some signs there. Thank you. Any further questions, debate on this item? In that case, I put it to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Thank you. Uh, we've got notice of motion 2116. Councillor Bolton. Okay, um, this is that um, to the motion itself. Um, council resolves to note that the Metropolitan Fire Brigade found that the use of non-compliant aluminium composite panelling contributed to the spread of the fire in a high-rise apartment block in the Docklands in 2014. Um, ooh, well, actually, there's a little bit of the wording missing in that um, 
anyway, I didn't. Did I bring the actual? Yeah, I relied on the what was in the in the. Okay. Um, yeah. To note that um, one tick. Um, there's a bit missing from that motion. Could we, we go could go to general to another motion and certainly I'll we'll, just we'll go to general business items words. and come back to yeah. this item. Yeah, so we haven't. Uh, Procedure will say we have it hasn't entered debate because it hasn't been seconded yet. Uh, so we'll move to general business items. Uh, Councillors, there's a pack of general business items that you would have received. Um, given the time of the night, uh, I'll ask that we don't read out all the words of the motion because you've got them in front of you. So please have a look at those um, first motions. We've got uh, Councillor Kavanagh first um, regarding traffic tr management treatments for Melbourne Avenue. Yep. Okay, um, the council was all. <clears throat> so, no, you don't okay. have to read that. As, as read on the, <laughs> sorry, as read on the second, the final paragraph. There is the actual motion. Thank the you. Rest is is there a seconder for this um, item? Council, sorry, Davidson, one just for you. Councilor Davidson is seconding. Uh, just sort of follows up on a uh, gentleman that came to the council meeting last week. Um, uh, I realise that there has been some work done, but I think if you put it in the public forum. It, um, so I'm looking forward to it seeing the report and what it recommends. Okay. Okay. Councillor Davidson, nothing. Further. Any further comment? Um, yeah. I just thought to, I thought that um, the, because we made some commitments to do follow up things at that yeah. particular meeting. Yes. So this is just to reiterate. Yeah, that. he has had. It, we have done some traffic counts, etc., yeah. and some speed yeah. things. Um, at the moment, uh, he has received a letter. Um, he's not that happy with that advice at the moment, so I am asking that it come before it counts or so oh, at okay. least it's in a yeah. public forum to okay. see. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Um, no further comment. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Uh, Councillor Bolton around East West Link Houses, so we can take the motion as read if you'd like. Okay. Well, the f uh, yes, okay. That's when it comes first. Okay. I've got a second one. Is the the other oh, one the on motion? disability. Sorry, I'm just going to clarify. Just one second. There's disability parking permits. So we're doing the renewal notices. Uh, we're doing East West Link. Oh, after disability okay, okay. parking. Okay, stickers. no problem. We'll do the disability parking stickers first. Hmm. So. Um, I'm okay, so oh, it hasn't oh, been seconded I'll, yet I'll second either. It. Okay, Councillor Hopper is seconding the motion. Uh, everyone's read the motion. We're on the same page. Uh, there's a procedural motion that the motion be put. All those in favour? All those against, I declare that carried. So I'll put that motion to the vote. All those in favor? Oh, all those against, I declare that carried. Right. Uh, Councillor Bolton, we might come back to your other general business item because that came in later, didn't it? Or do you no, wish no, to no, no, that? I mean, the same time? Okay, same time. we'll move to the East Western Houses. Um, okay. Do you want me to summarise the points, the key points? We can read it, it's right behind you. Okay. Yep, sorry, Councillor Thompson. Oh, did you already second? No, I didn't. Okay, okay. okay. Councillor Bolton, do you wish to speak to it? Yes, I do. Um, I'm moved, this is a motion which came out of the Moreland Housing Advisory Group um, for the houses that were requisitioned for East West Link to um, which are sitting vacant, get are being prepared for sale to um, be used for public housing. Um, there was a statement in the media in the Sunday Age, but it's not incredibly conclusive. Um, there was inference that um, the uh, Premier was going to use them for some sort of affordable housing. Um, not sure, but there, I can't find any press releases on any of the relevant ministers' sites. And the, um, the Harmless Persons Union that is occupying one of the houses um, has had contact with the Department of Human Services and there isn't anything conclusive at this point. So I'm simply moving that we write calling for these houses to be um, turned into public housing and not the um, not transferred to these not-for-profit housing associations where um, you know people don't have the same rights as public tenants um, to be to really help rebuild the public housing stock. Um, Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Uh, Councillor Thompson, do you wish to add anything further? Uh, no. Is there any further debate or comment, Councillor Hopper? 
Yeah, so um, just after Councillor Bolton mentioned that she'd had trouble finding anything in reference to Minister Foley um, speaking in relation to these houses, I did a bit of a Google search and I found an Age article from about four days ago, mm -hmm. um, in fact, suggesting that dozens of properties acquired to make way for the East West Link could end up being used to help women and children fleeing violent homes. And I note that um, an enormous part of the package from the Royal Commission was around housing uh, and the provision of public housing um, to women um, who are fleeing violence and so I think that we have an incredibly important opportunity here um, that there certainly sounds like there is an appetite um, to promote and I mean going back to the substance of the motion I think that I, I look at what happened in the case of the East West Link and the hurried nature um, of everything around it and I just think of these people who lived in these houses um, and who for many of them it must have been their homes for so many years um, and to have lost um, their homes. I mean, certainly they were compensated for it, but to have had their homes compulsorily acquired by the previous state government um, and now for those to be sitting there vacant and the East West Link not going to be built, I just think that must be heartbreaking for those people and I think it's a really sorry state of affairs. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Hopper. Any further comment on this item? Councillor Kavanagh. I'm going to speak against the motion. Okay. All right. um, and I want to explain why I'm speaking against the motion. Uh, Certainly, I'm a full supporter of public housing, and I've got that on record. But the fact is, and I, I'm not against what the uh, Homeless uh, Persons Union of Victoria has done as such, but they are acting illegally at the point of time. And, 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 and if um, if we had squatters in Moreland that were uh, occupying houses illegally, I would be the first person to be saying that that's the incorrect thing to be doing. And so, therefore, I agree that they've probably been terribly peaceful, but they are currently uh, acting illegally, and I don't think a council should be supporting illegal action. Okay, thank you. Any further comment? Councillor Kavanagh. Um, I rise to time, echo and moving. support the comments of Councillor Kavanagh, um, but also express sentiments of support for those actual houses being um, considered for public housing stock. And I do believe um, uh, a lot of those are new apartments that were compulsory acquired, and most residents were able to repurchase their um, their, their family homes, but nonetheless, there is a, uh, a number of um, compulsory acquired properties, and, and, and uh, there is such a need out there for public housing that should be considered. So, my request um, to you, Mayor, is perhaps if we could um, split uh, point um, number one and put that separately, and then put point two and three together. Okay, I'm happy that to. Would, uh, yep, that would be we'll move them separately. Um, and, and yep. so, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm happy to support the concept, but I, I certainly agree with Councillor okay. Kavanagh about not supporting an action which I haven't heard of, apart from what's sitting there. So, for all we know, they could have actually destroyed a lot of those properties. You know, okay. So, I'll put those points separately, that. if that's okay, yeah. just for the sake of time, if you can uh, be can very brief. Reply to one lady. Yeah, yeah, very quickly, yes. please. Yes. Um, so. Okay, I can understand where um, some councillors are coming from. But really, it wasn't until the Homeless Persons Union took this action that real, most people were aware that these houses were idle and being um, put out for sale. So really, their action has prompted the government to uh, stop the sale in some cases. Um, but it's not a very firm, not as firm a commitment. We don't know what sort of housing it's going to be. We, um, the intention of this motion is to get a clear commitment of public housing and not just off to these housing associations. So um, I'm happy if pep uh, for people to split the different points of the motion. Mm -hmm. But um, just we'll like just move that, that forward now. So I'll put uh, point number one to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Uh, put number two to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. And I'll put number three to the vote. All those in favour? Three, four, five. All those against? I declare that carried. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Uh, we're now moving to Councillor Thompson, Lenka Thompson. Uh, and we'll take the motions as read. Uh, so this is blue orbital, orbital smart bus motion. Is there, uh, so Councillor Thompson's uh, moving it. Councillor Tapanos is seconding it. Councillor uh, Thompson, do you wish to speak to it? Um, no, we can just take it as okay. we Councillor Tapanos? Uh, no, uh, just to say that this was promised. Um, <laughs> yes. This was promised many years ago, 
and then when it's bar classes were delivered, this one was removed. Yes. So um, particularly in the Brunswick uh, community and right across that line, um, there was great um, excitement and expectation that this will become a reality. We haven't heard of it since. So I do think it's a good advocacy item and it would be great if this starts um, getting on the plans yeah. of, future, um, mm -hmm. of future state government. Um, and I know that it would ease some of the congestion and traffic going east to west. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Tapanos. Any further Probably comment on this item? And I guess I put it to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Uh, we've got another one from Councillor Thompson, Public Transport Week. Uh, take the motion as read. Yes. Asking for a report. Uh, is there a seconder? Asking. I'd like to second this if there's no other seconder. Uh, Councillor Thompson, do you wish to speak to this? No, I'm happy for it to be taken as read. Okay. So, uh, uh, just very briefly, um, uh, moving from the bikes on uh, buses successful trial, we are trying to always um, help us mode shift to sustainable transport modes, uh, and buses are such a key part of that. Uh, but where this report is calling for us to really encourage the community to use public transport uh, through sort of a public transport week uh, to get some enthusiasm and energy into taking public transport. And uh, we know that these kind of weeks have successes in other domains. So we're hoping that this trial uh, will also yield um, some good results. Any further comment or question on this item? All those in favour? All those against, declare that carried. Councillor Lambros Tapadoff, I think you've got an amended version to the one uh, circulated. Uh, the one actually circulated here is the amended version. Yes, so you um, might want to just read the bit that's been amended. Um, yep. The bit that's been amended is the word consider. Okay. Where? Can you please read out the full motion with the changes? Uh, that's that council receives a council report and signage policy, uh, policy in cooperation with sporting clubs, which considers, that's been the word mm -hmm. amended, which considers establishing a working party, which includes council officers and sporting clubs to draft a policy that meets the needs of the amenity, safety, local environment, neighbours and clubs. Okay. So the word considers is what the Certainly. amendment was to make it comply with the general Is the part items. two still in the motion? The part two is still in the motion, yes. So okay, Councillor Thompson, wishing to second this motion. Councillor Tappanos. Thank you. Um, Councillors, um, we've heard just today from um, some sporting clubs and tennis clubs, um, and we know that the great work they do in our community. Um, we know that many of them are at capacity and need to further expand as our um, population grows. And as a council, it is my view, and I know it is shared by many members here, that we should be doing everything possible to be able to assist them to grow and become financially sustainable. Um, there is some concern in the uh, community at the moment about uh, our mall and planning scheme and the provisions in there around signage and what does that mean uh, for them. Um, it is true that under our current law, a lot of signs that clubs have may need to be removed. So uh, we have in the past moved a resolution to develop a policy that uh, can then inform a planning scheme amendment. So the purpose of my motion here is to develop or consider developing um, this working group so we can bring the clubs into the conversation and we can actually understand their needs a lot better and we can start developing a policy which meets their needs, which has a look at a whole range of issues around signage, um, that doesn't just classify all signs in one area and says, we have signs that are novels which are close to residential properties. We have signs which are novels which are not seen by the road or not seen by residential properties. Should they be in the same category or not? Um, we have short-term signs for sponsorship. We have long-term signs for promotion of the club. It is a complex <coughs> issue. Um, and, and I believe that without bringing the expertise which is held in the clubs and working together, um, we're not going to be able to do the policy justice. So, um, so I am um, moving this tonight and I hope it gets support so we can start developing that draft strategy in consultation with clubs and of course it will come to council in the future for a decision and that will inform a planning scheme amendment in the future. But I think at the moment there is too much angst in the community about the current law and, and the draft proposal which was circulated at the sports forum. Um, and, and I think that wasn't the intention. And the intention should really be to work with the clubs and develop a policy that meets their needs. Thank you, Councillor Tapanos. Councillor Thompson. 
Do you wish to add anything further? Uh, I'm happy to support Councillor Tapanos's motion here. Um, in both my existing uh, employer, employee and uh, previously, I've sponsored uh, dozens of sporting facilities. Uh, many of them uh, are just to put our sign up and to, uh, for internal sponsorship within our within our business. Feel good and feel part of a community and, and to be given back. Um, more, moreover, some of these sporting clubs uh, locally rely so heavily on these you know, few hundred dollars that they get from from small companies that are local that are just giving a little bit of signage and wanting to support the, the, the club. It's not about hard sell advertising. It's certainly not about sponsorship rights or, or, or the like more often than not. Uh, it's just about giving back to the community, giving back to the club. And, and for that, I think we need to continue to make sure that our clubs are feeling mm -hmm. supportive. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Can I ask a, a question of clarification, if that's okay? Just in terms of the uh, nature of this item for general business item, and I know that you've ch uh, changed the first point. Uh, my question is around, the first part is asking us to consider establishing working party. So we haven't established one yet, but the second part gives instruction to that working party, working group, uh, and it's actually quite prescriptive about the things that it wants it to do. And I should think it's outside the scope of a general business item because a working group hasn't been established yet. Once the report comes back and maybe recommends the working party thing, then we give a direction. But at this stage, we have no working party. So asking it to consider planning <laughs> scheme amendments, you know, is a, I think is an overreach of the general business item. So that's my point of noting there. Any further comment? I thought Councillor Hopper was first and then Councillor Davidson. Mr Chair, are you rejecting the motion? Uh, no, there's a question of concern. I'll come back to speaking to it. Councillor Hopper. Oh, look, I had a question um, and I know that this has been canvassed in several emails this week and I apologise that I'm perhaps not as across this item as I could be. And if I'm asking a question that's already been dealt with in those emails, um, but I'd like to understand in what way this report is different mm. to the sporting ground signage policy that was considered at great depth last year, um, where there was very heated debate in this chamber. And I know that I used my casting vote at the time to let it go through um, in relation to sponsorship of sporting ground signage. And by doing this motion tonight, are we doubling up on that from last year? And are we just dragging that debate up all over again? Councillor Hopper, the, that policy was around name of sports grounds and this is about sponsorship totally signage so it's different okay. so that was just about right. can you change your name if you get sponsorship thank you uh, that's why the debate I appreciate was the clarification. yep just councillor davidson this was just to add to um your point um councillor batner perhaps for the second part of the motion it could be in the event that um the 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 working group is adopted, yeah. then that flows on from. Thank you, Councillor yeah. Davidson. I still, I think I have a concern about being so prescriptive about what, what a working group's going to do when it's a gender or business item. Notice yeah. the motion is different, so that's my question. Uh, the CEO and then Councillor Tapanos wanted to add something? Just, just through the Mayor, just a suggestion. Um, so there's a few things in train that you could also use that will help define it, and it, again, just as a, a possible way. Um, so currently there is a draft policy uh, that went to the winter, the annual and winter sports club forum on the 21st of March. Um, clubs were sent a policy for comment. The current closing date is the 22nd of April for the consultation with the clubs. That will come to council in May or June at an IND, which might be a good place where if you want to do, if you do want to go down the path of something like this, that could give you the chance to work that up a bit further. It's a suggestion given that there is a draft policy in train at the moment and that it will come to you through an IND. So you've got some other options if you want to do that. Okay. No. Um, so no, um, just yes. a, in response to Councillor yep. Hopper, they are vastly different. Um, we have the, clarified. We've clarified oh, that. Clarified we've clarified that. Feel clear on that. Yes. Okay, great. Is there anything um, further you wish to add uh, to that debate? Um, Very mindful of time, regards, we do need to. No, I'd like to proceed with this. In regards to a draft motion that was circulated to clubs, that motion, that policy has no standing whatsoever. It hasn't been for this chamber. Um, in the past, um, prior to undertaking consultations, draft policies come through this chamber. We haven't seen that draft policy. Um, I've heard bits and pieces about it and I disagree with it. So what I'm seeking to do here is to put on the record very clearly that um, we are going to undertake a process that is different to that draft policy. Um, it is the draft policy which has caused angst in the community because the contents of that draft policy is not what the clubs want to see when they speak to me um, and uh, I believe when they've spoken to other councillors here. So this is our opportunity to actually set the parameters and some of the vision for what we want to see. 
<coughs> and that's why that second knot point is important. Okay, thank um, you. Where there's no point in continuing, and I'm sure that the clubs will tell us this when the submissions close, but um, uh, we meet once a month and this is our opportunity to put on record that um, that process, although it's continuing and it closed on the 22nd, um, is not going to be the end. We're going to actually develop this working group and we are going to consider some of the things that they have raised and they want to see considered. But currently not in the draft policy. Thank you, Councillor Tapanos. Uh, I'm going to propose. Uh, yes, and I'm going to propose that we move those two parts separately, so people can vote on them separately. Councillor Bolton, well, point final point question. Point 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 he didn't. He was responding to some of the concerns. He wasn't closing the debate. Okay. Councillor Bolton, you have a question. We are going to move um, on after this. I've got a question for Councillor Tapanos. Um, you made reference to a draft policy, which I don't think I've seen, um, that no, you dis no disagree no, with. Social. So, uh, just uh, just for some clarification, I just would be good to know what sort of things are being worked on, which um, you know, the, which are different to what you're putting forward. It, it is my view that in the draft policy, although signs are allowed, they are quite prescriptive, and it does call for enforcement um, of signs that do not comply after a period of time, which could actually see council if that draft policy were to proceed. Um, removing thousands of cross signs across the city. Okay, uh, just in terms That's of the just process, one of many changes. just to clarify, in terms of the process, Councillor mm -hmm. Bolton. So this policy, draft policy, has not come to council yet. Mm -hmm. Officers, I believe, are doing some consultation work, which often happens with policies, even to get the draft developed. They're not often writing it in isolation. They might <coughs> consult with clubs around what should be in the draft policy. The draft policy is coming to us through an IND and it'll come to a meeting in the next couple of months, uh, at which point we get to resolve one way or the other which way we want to go forward. Yeah, this is, and there'll, be, round. and there'll be another round of consultation afterwards. This is an extra process that Councillor Tapanos is uh, proposing, uh, given some of the concerns he's heard around the pre-consultation work. Uh, given the time of the evening, unless there's further questions, I'm going to put this different parts to the vote, if that's okay. Everyone's clear on what we're talking about in terms of process, okay? I'll put the first part of the motion to the vote. So it's about receiving the report. All those in favor? All those against? I declare that carried. And I'll put the second part of the motion to the vote. All those in favor? This is the second part of the motion. All those against? I declare that lost. Can I have a division on that? Yes, you can have a division on that. Uh, we'll ask again for all those in favour of part two. Councillor Rob Thompson, Yildiz, oh. Tapanos. Oh. Hang on. Oh. Maybe it's, it's one. Maybe it's oh. one. No. Um, I changed my mind. Actually, well, it has to be a replication of the initial no, vote. We're not recasting. No, no, no we're not no, recasting. Read the standing orders. No, we're not recasting the vote. It's still standing orders. You Point can. of order. I, oh, I would like the standing orders checked. The okay, one second. We're just going to pause for that. <laughs> we're not redoing the vote. We were just counting the division. Yeah, you can change your mind in the division. Change the division. <laughs> okay, <laughs> am I right? I declare. Okay, so we'll just say those in favour, councillors and uh, members of the gallery. Uh, this is not time for discussion. I'm sorry, the question time is over. All those in favour of part two of the Oscar. motion. Councillors, we're still in formal meeting. All those in favour of point two of the motion. <laughs> Councillor Yildiz, Rob Thompson, Tapanos, uh, Gillies, Hopper and Bolton. All those against? Councillor Lenka Thompson, Ratnam, Davidson, Kavanagh. So it says lost. So it's, 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 yes, it's, it's carried. carried. <laughs> Councillor Thompson, please, we're in formal meeting. All right, we're now moving on to uh, a couple of my general business items. Uh, I'll take it as read, around dog waste disposal. Uh, is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Kavanagh, uh, I don't really wish to speak to it. It's a limited trial that we are scoping through a report. Councillor Kavanagh, wish to add anything further? Any further comments or questions? All those in favour? All those against? Declare that carried. Uh, next is enhancing council online community participation. Uh, is there a seconder to this motion? I'll take it as read. Councillor Lenka Thompson. Uh, and if I speak to you very briefly, it's just to look at methods of increasing the interactivity of our live streaming. Uh, so we've got a very successful live streaming uh, that's been happening of our council meetings. And this is about thinking about new ways of audience interaction with that live streaming uh, 
uh, through a number of social media uh, platforms. Uh, Councillor Thompson, do you wish to add anything further? Yep. Uh, any further comment, Councillor Hopper? Yes. Um, look, I'd just like to ask whether this was in fact covered by the original report in which we approved live streaming, um, because I feel like when that report came to council, it actually did comprehensively cover the fact that moving forward, once we had consolidated live streaming, we would then look at things like Twitter interaction um, and other ways of using this technology. And I just worry about double reporting on something um, and the resource constraint that that places on our officers. So whilst I am supportive of the idea, if it has in fact already been canvassed by a previous report, um, then I'd prefer not to make officers write another yes. reporting topic. Yes. CEO wishes to respond. Um, so just from my read of the motion, I, I believe it's to come back to an IND and talk to you about that. And so my memory is that the original report was quite comprehensive, but it didn't push the button on any of those those other things, it, it foreshadowed them. So if this is about coming to an IND and talking about now how might we progress on those things, then that would be extending that further. Yep. Any further comments? Uh, all those in favour of this motion? All those against? I declare that carried. Thank you. Uh, um, raise back off the table the external uh, Yes, wall, so, uh, so it wasn't put on the table, so we're just going to back to notice of motion that we hadn't completed. Yeah. Uh, that's so that's uh, since notice of motion. Uh, would you like to propose an alternative wording? Yes, yes. I've sent it through to Lydia. Hopefully you've received it. Um, so basically, to insert an extra point two, um, which is note that the Victorian Building Authority carried out a compulsory audit which found that 51% um, of buildings with the external wall cladding was not compliant. And then renumber the subsequent points. Um, but with, with the point three, instead of saying in due course, um, to say that council then receive a report on compliance and the use of external wall cladding in buildings in Moreland. Okay. Uh, do we have a seconder for this motion? Councillor Gillies. Councillor Bolton, do you wish to speak to it briefly, please? I think this is really, really important because I think it's very um, scary um, what's happening with this external wall cladding and the level of flammable wall cladding um, throughout the high rise in the city of um, CBD and surrounding areas. Now that we're getting a lot more large buildings, I um, I really feel we do need to have some sort of report come uh, back to council indicating you know, what, um, what the state of play is in Moreland. There are some officer comments here which indicate that, um, that you know, it may not be such an issue because we don't have such tall buildings which use this sort of cladding in Moreland. But I actually think we do need to make an assessment and certainly um, some of, even I think the Metropolitan Fire Brigade or informally speaking, talking to some people in the Metropolitan Fire Brigade, I think um, some of even the compliant wall cladding is still reasonably flammable. Um, so, you know, it's actually, I think, quite a concerning issue in Melbourne at the moment. And, um, you know, I mean, the nightmare it would have been of trying to fight a fire um, in a high rise, like in Docklands, um, is really quite scary. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Councillor Gillies, do you wish to add anything further? Oh, no. Okay. Any further comment or question, debate? No? I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Thank you, councillors. We've finished our ordinary business. So uh, could I please have a motion to close the meeting uh, to the public in accordance with Section 89.2 uh, of the Local Government Act uh, 1989? Do we move into confidential? Councillor Gillies. And is there a seconder? Councillor Thompson. Uh, all those in favour? All those against, I declare that carried. Thank you, members of the gallery, for staying the course of tonight. Can we have a three minute break? Oh, We've just got two items. Uh, members of the gallery, may I please ask you to uh, leave the gallery. Thank you very much.